Hello students, in today's video we are going to study about the corrosion control. Now we all know that corrosion is a spontaneous destructive process, it's a spontaneous destructive phenomena. But how can we actually try and control the corrosion? How can we stop risking our different appliances, different machinery, so many different phases and phase of our daily lives from getting corroded, from getting into the destructive format? So, we'll see the different ways in which we can protect our appliances. As the corrosion process is very harmful and loses incurred are tremendous. Now, if we see on a day-to-day -day life in our domestic appliances, there are many kitchen appliances, there are many kitchen utensils, there are many modes of transportation like our cars, our cycles, all of them are made up of metal. If we see on an industrial level, there are so many industrial purposes and industrial lands wherein the industries have big, big machineries and these big machineries are actually harming, are getting harmed because of the corrosion. So they are harmful and the losses are tremendous. It becomes necessary to minimize or control corrosion of metals. It is very important to control the corrosion of metals. Corrosion can be stopped completely only under ideal conditions. The conditions should be ideal. When it comes to the conditions, the condition of the metal, the condition of the environment, all of them should support the enhancement of the metal and not the corrosion of the metal. But the attainment of ideal conditions is not possible. You cannot control the temperature of the environment. You cannot control the humidity of the environment. We cannot control the pH level of the environment. Now what do I mean by the pH level of the environment? pH is nothing but a scale and on that scale we testify whether a particular substance is acidic or is basic. Now what do we mean by acidic or is basic? If the pH is less than 7, the entire pH scale is 0 to 14. So if the pH is less than 7, then it is acidic in nature. If the pH is greater than 7, then it is basic in nature. And if it is equal to 7, it is neutral. But all of that is not in our hands. Similarly, it is not in our hands to stop the spontaneous reaction of the machine with the environment. However, it is possible to minimize the corrosion considerably we cannot stop it it is going to happen so what is there in our hands it is very important for us to realize that we can not stop but at least we can minimize it as much as possible since the types of corrosion are so numerous and the conditions under which corrosion occurs are so different diverse methods are used to control corrosion there is not only one type of corrosion that this particular thing will happen and we need to stop it. No. Corrosion is a concept. There are various ways in this corrosion happens. There are different different ways in which the entire corrosion process takes place. That means it is all very diversified. And if it is diversified, we cannot stop it completely. The maximum we can do over here is to try and minimize it as much as possible. As the corrosion is a reaction between a metal or alloy and the environment, any method of corrosion control must be aimed at either modifying the metal or the environment. What is basically corrosion? Corrosion is a spontaneous reaction. It's a reaction between the metal and the environment. So what is there in the environment? We have different gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, all these gases are present in the environment. So the reaction can happen chemically, that means with the help of chemicals. Biochemically, that means with the help of biochemistry or electrochemically. And this can be stopped if we try and control either the environment or the metal itself. The first thing we can do is choice of metals and alloys. That means we need to choose our metals and alloys very wisely. We cannot just take any active metal and then we can just try and design in such a way that corrosion will not happen. The choice must be very important. The first choice is to use noble metals such as gold and platinum. If you have seen gold, gold does not decay very easily. So if we have any kind of gold, 
gold jewelry, gold rings, earrings, pendants, necklaces. You keep them even in presence of air, they will not react with air. The rate of reaction is still there, but it is extremely low. It takes tens of thousands of years for one gram of gold to actually react with the environment. Similarly, platinum. Platinum itself is a wonderful metal. It is a noble metal and it will react very rarely. They are most resistant to corrosion. As they are precious, they cannot be used for general purposes. Generally, metals are used in so many different ways. You cannot have a vehicle made up of gold or you cannot have a building made out of gold or you cannot have utensils made up of gold. Of course, there were times in history where utensils were made of gold, but now with the increase in the value and the price of gold, gold cannot be used for day-to-day -day purpose. The next choice is to use purest possible metal. Now, if I do not have noble metals, let me just go to the ordinary metals. But now these ordinary metals should have the least number or the most less amount of impurities present in it. But in many cases, it is not possible to produce a metal of high chemical purity. Hence, even a trace amount of impurity leads to corrosion. Even if the impurity is very, very less, there are high chances of it leading to corrosion. The third thing is, thus the next choice is to use corrosion resistant alloys. Now what are alloys? Alloys are nothing but a mixture of two solid substances. When two solids are mixed together, it forms an alloy. Generally in form of the metals, two or more metals when they combine together. Or a metal which is combining with non-metals. Or a metal combining with another metal and a non-metal. This mixture is known as alloys. Several corrosion resistant alloys have been deployed for specific purposes and environment. For example, stainless steel. Now we all know stainless steel and it is being used in our kitchens in the form of utensils. In this stainless steel, we can practically cook anything and everything of any pH value. For example, let us take stainless steel. In this stainless steel, I can put curd, which is acidic in nature, and I can also heat it up. That means I am adding curd, which is acidic in nature, and I am heating the acid up, and yet that particular heated acid will not react with steel. If the same thing I do with copper, copper will react with curd very immediately, turning the curd bitter and releasing harmful toxins, which are not good for the health. That means an alloy is always a good choice. Stainless steel containing chromium produce an exceptionally coherent oxide film which protects the steel from further attack. So once that film is formed, no further attack will take place. Then we have cupronickel, that means 70% of copper and 30% of nickel alloys are now used for condenser tubes and for bubble trays used in fractionating columns in oil refineries. Now when I have oil refineries and I am passing my oil from one chamber to another chamber and in that if the delivery tubes itself are getting corroded with the oil then those impurities will get mixed with the oil and my oil will get contaminated. Thus it is extremely important to make sure that those delivery tubes are strong enough to withhold the pressure and the temperatures of an industry but are not reactive enough when it comes to oil. C. Highly stressed mnemonic alloys. So over here, I have different nickel, chromium and molybdenum alloys mixed together, used in gas turbines, are very resistant to hot gases. So now there is a very special merger of three elements, nickel, chromium and molybdenum. All of them, when mixed together properly, they will form an alloy and this alloy is useful for other gases. Second is proper designing. Proper geometrical design plays a vital role in the control of corrosion of equipments and structures of materials and components to control corrosion. So apart from the nature of the material and the nature of the environment, we also have to focus on the designing after 
we pick out the correct environment and we pick out the correct metal now we need to focus on the designing always use simple design and structure if we have a lot of intricate designing and intricate structures those particular intricate designs will trap in different gases or water molecules in it and that will lead to corrosion the next point says the design must avoid more complicated shapes having more angles edges corners etc that is again for the same reason as i said it is important to have simple designs because these simple designs will help us to choose better it will help us to keep it clean it will help us to make sure that there is lesser interaction between the gaseous particles and the metal avoid the contact of dissimilar metals as they may lead to galvanic type of corrosion so if you have a copper and a stainless steel together copper and stainless steel will form two cathodes one will be anodic one will be cathodic and this will form nothing but an electrolytic cell which will lead to fast rated corrosion which is not advisable to overcome this the insulation can be used when two dissimilar metals are to be in contact the anodic area must be as large as possible and the cathodic area should be as small as possible it is very important to have large anodic areas and small cathodic areas and not vice versa if i have large cathodic areas the entire anode will sacrifice itself to make sure that the reaction keeps on going so do two dissimilar metals are very important one of which having a large anodic area and a smaller cathodic area as far as possible surfaces that means any kinds of gaps or any kinds of cracks should be avoided between adjacent parts of the structure any kinds of gaps or cracks will lead to more reaction which should be avoided bolts on rivets should be replaced by proper welding instead of keeping different bolts and rivets one should try and keep proper welding metal washers should be replaced by rubber or plastic washers as they do not absorb water they also act as insulation so instead of having a metal washer if you have rubber or plastic now rubber or plastic are both non metals are not corrosive in nature are not very reactive in nature and that is the reason why they will not absorb water which will act as a good insulation corrosion in pipelines can be provided by using smooth bends instead of having sharp bends if you all see the pipelines even at domestic use even the pipelines which are fitted in the buildings on the terraces they will have smooth bends not sharp bends just to prevent corrosion heat treatment like annealing minimizes the stress corrosion so if the entire metal is already stressed up with the heat treatment no more stress will affect it a good design of water storage container is the one from which water can be drained and cleaned easily such design avoids accumulation of dirt if i have a water container and if i have some water already remaining in it and if that water keeps on being there that means that particular water will form a film on the walls and because of that film the entire corrosion will start taking place inside the water container instead of doing that if we just have a proper drainage system outside the container the water will completely flow out leading to a much better design and much less of corrosion so why are we study the corrosion control how can we control corrosion by using proper materials and by proper designing thank you